Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 251 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. 52. 52 of this, is it? Because Grilly. Oh, fuck. Yeah, guys, look, all right? I'm t- I thought I was going to turn over a new leaf. I thought I was going to keep up track with the new episodes since this big milestone. Quarter of a thousand episodes. Guess what? Sucked in. I'm never get. I'm never improving. I'm set in my ways. I'm never going to improve. Maybe when I get to episode one thousand, I'll just start from one again, <laughs> and I'll just go one thousand and one. That'll be a little bit easier. How long do we have to go till we get to the, get there? Five uh, years? F- n- no, more no, than that. Probably twenty years. Twenty twenty years. With how you're going? Yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> all, right, uh, all right, dude. Okay. <laughs> Five years to get to episode two hundred and fifty. Everybody knows that whenever I miss an episode, it's your fault. So don't oh, of course. put this on me. But last week when. I asked you five times Can we please not weekend, do the episode In a weekend Can we well, I set it up for you And said let's do it Yeah And then you didn't so, Okay look <laughs> And and you know what That's your fault for not being Not making it sound exciting enough oh, sorry, yeah, You, you sorry. didn't make that's, this sound more fun I'm, You should have gone me. I'll set it up It'll be a great time There'll be some chockies <laughs> You know what? What am, what am I getting out of this? Should I pay it out of pocket for Chucky's? Absol- absolutely, absolutely. You should have. I demand from now. We've done two hundred and fifty episodes now. Two hundred and fifty-two, right? Mm. I want a reward at the end of every episode, <laughs> starting now. <laughs> I want a little treat. You can have a little protein bar after this. Well, one. that's not. Look, dude. Strong neck Spears is back. Look at this shit. Look at my fucking neck. Mm. I'm. I've become. A, a massive <laughs> necked individual. Rosie, Rosie's just met strong neck Spears. You know, the other day she's like, "Dude, is your neck another person, <laughs> or is that just you?" And I was like, "I'd like to introduce you to strong neck Spears." Every I don't know what it is. Whenever I start going to gym regularly, the biggest improvement in size and mass is always my neck. <laughs> When, and it's a big neck anyway. It's always been a long neck. I think it's actually just because I have such a long neck that it, if, increases in, if it increases in width in any way, people go, dude, nice neck. I've got quite a strong neck. I don't train it, you know? Imagine if I did train it. Do you reckon that, that could be a thing that you could have, like the world's strongest neck? Ooh, maybe. Maybe like lifting weights with it. You'd probably be competing with um, like Riley Reed for world's strongest neck, mm. I think. Or th- <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm the fittest that I've ever been in my life. I've been swimming every morning and then every night going to gym. And if if anyone if anyone ever dares to challenge me to a swimming race, they will lose. You I don't count. You. We're swimming with a Paralympian this week. We're in Perth for the week. We're going to swim with a Paralympian. So I'm feeling confident. I was thinking, is it rude to mm. go? We were in a group chat with him and I just called him an Olympian. I saw that and adding, I was like, hmm. Adding just adding para, para there makes it sound like it's not an achievement. But he is a Paralympian. But it's, it is an achievement. I think it's, it's more impressive well, that he's managed to like, become an athlete I despite... Know. Maybe we can ask him, but I feel like adding para makes it sound like, oh, good try. Look, good you, effort. no, look, it would have been disrespectful if you put special at the front. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been disrespectful. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, mate. You're going to go for a swim? You can swim? Oh, what? Where's, where's your floaties? That would be disrespectful. Oh, wow. You want a goal. Yeah. Dude, speaking of the Special Olympics... Last night, I was kept up all night. I was kept up all night. All night, I was kept up. We're in Perth. The first night, there's birds out the front and they, and they, and they wouldn't shut up at night time. And they did that again last night again, right? So I'm like, man, we're in such a strange area, so much weird wildlife. I've never stayed in this part of Perth before. And last night, there was this animal that just kept going, whoop, whoop. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I'm lying awake in my bed going, what is that noise? I couldn't work out what the noise was. I'm like, is that a dingo? Is that Does a dingo make that noise? Because we're in Perth. We get animals like that you don't really see in Melbourne or Tassie. So I'm like, oh, maybe it's like a dingo. I couldn't sleep. I'm like, it's a fucking animal. Anyway, then I woke up this morning 
and uh, and there's there's even more noise coming from outside my window, and uh, and I discover based on the noise that the whole house is full of mentally disabled people next door. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's not an animal. That's, yeah, I felt so terrible. Because I was, I was laying awake in my bed going, gee, that would interest you. No, is that a mating call? What is that? And maybe it was, I don't know. Um, anyway, I probably should have said that bit a little bit quieter. <laughs> Um, so look, Perth is going good. Uh, we're just here on a little bit of a stand-up retreat. I'm I'm here for the week. I've got my shows on Thursday night, uh, which have already happened by the time you guys are listening to this. Unless you're Patreon supporters, get the fuck on it. You get the podcast early. Uh, so I assume those were fun. I hope I didn't get cancelled. Otherwise, this is going to come across as awkward. Um, uh, and uh, just doing stand-up every night here, which is awesome because I haven't been able to do that at all for the last year or so, perform every night since the festival. Um, the gigs in Perth are so good. They're so fucking good. Uh, one, one night last night, went out, did a gig, and it was just packed full of people who had paid to be there, mm. which is so different from Melbourne. Like, you do a gig in Melbourne, and it's usually like... Uh, 25 open mic comedians standing up the back, either ignoring you or talking shit about your act, and then four punters who don't want to see comedy. Mm. Because comedy in Melbourne, all of the gigs are organised by comedians for comedians. And if the audience is going to be there, just don't, don't have fun. This isn't for you. That seems to be the attitude. Whereas in all the other states, it's the right attitude of like, man, let's put on a good show for people. So we can be really funny. Whereas Melbourne's like, dude, let's put on a show so we can hang out and argue and, and, and politic with each other. And then at the end of the night, tell each other whose who's joke was the, was, the most, uh, was the most transphobic, you know? And, and then post about it on Facebook and get them banned from rooms. That's the vibe in Melbourne. But in Perth, it's very much like, let's put on a good show for the people. This one night I did, last night, awesome. Way too many comedians on the bill though. Fucking stacks. Like it was a great night and everyone there was really good, but there was like fucking 25 of them. It was heaps of heaps of comedians. Like the show went for fucking ages. I didn't get on stage until like almost, uh, almost nine, I think. And it was a great gig, but there was like 25 comedians. I kept watching. I'm like, man, this guy's going well. Man, this guy's going. She's crushing. And then just waiting for my turn. And then there was this one chick who, who, uh, who did poems about her pussy for 10 minutes. And then they had to play the music to get her off. <laughs> and the audience was great. They were very disappointed that she was leaving. They're like, oh, come on. One more. One more. So that was good. Um, I had to throw out all of my material. That was all my gear, poems about my pussy. Um, but dude, I've, I've uh, started writing next year's show, which is, which is I, it's way too late to write next year's show because I haven't been able to perform. But uh, I think I have like a good, fifth, a good like spine of a new 15 minutes maybe that I'm really happy with that's kind of going through. Uh, I just, I just don't know. I hope that by the time the comedy festival comes around next year in March, I will have at least a great like 50 minutes of material. But I don't know. This is the shortest time period I've ever had to like write an hour in my life, uh, which is basically like I'm starting now in November. Fuck. And then I'm going to have to be done by like, yeah, March. So what is that? November, December, Jan, Feb. It's like, five months to write an hour whereas usually you have an entire year so we'll see i think next year's show will will be there well there'll be one you'll be able to buy tickets <laughs> i'll let you know in four months whether or not it'll be good um <laughs> no i think it is i think it is going to be good i can tell it's going to be good because i did a bit at the start but the first time i did a bit a new one last night it made um half the crowd laugh and the other half really angry and that's, that's the hallmark of a great Lewis Spears bit is when the first time I do it, when it's at its ro most rough, some people laugh and other people are just horrified. I'm like, this, if I can turn that other 50% of the crowd around onto my side, this will be a great bit or I'll just have to throw it away because it's just me being mean. That's, that's the shit I like, horrifying half the crowd and then going, all right, how can I turn the people who disagree with me into people who are laughing and agreeing and going, fuck, he's right. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, dude, Big Brother started, the new Big Brother in Australia. And 
they've put everything into this. I feel like this is the this is TV going. This is our last shot. This is the last opportunity we'll ever have to to come back from the dead. What if we just fucking after COVID, after the internet, after ignoring anyone under thirty in terms of talent? <laughs> you know, like, dude, if you're under thirty, if you got a, if you have a Facebook account, you can't get a job on TV. They're like, duh, Facebook influencers. They don't even realize that TikTok is a thing. Yeah. They like, uh, dude. We looked at some of the ratings for television, and like some of the videos that I make are outrating the most popular shows in the country. I'm outrating the project right now. Cop that, Waleed. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gotta feel, you gotta feel embarrassed if if yeah. a, a, a video that I'm doing from Tasmania that I filmed in about 20 minutes is just outrating the project. Yeah. Cop that, Pete Hellier. Who else is on there? Carrie Bickmore. Cop that, Carrie. Stuart Little. Mm, cop that, Lisa Wilkinson. Dude, it's crazy how much money people on TV get to to do an average show in front of only 200,000 people. Yeah. Didn't Lisa Wilkinson get like a million dollars a year? She got something crazy, yeah. Mm. But now half of them, they don't even like each other and one of the co-hosts is over Zoom. So it's really? the most uncomfortable thing to watch. Dude. Rosie and I watched an episode the other week and someone would make a joke and they'd all go. <laughs> yeah, and like the and the audience is way smaller too because of COVID, I don't right? Think there is an audience. There's no audience. Man, that sounds terrible. Who the fuck would do a show over Zoom? Mm. Couldn't imagine. No, yeah. No, but from experience <laughs> doing Luke and Lewis for like an entire year, Zoom makes it so much harder to do a show and we make a good show. So I don't know how <laughs> they're pulling off the fucking project, you know? Like imagine having to tell tell someone that they're racist over Zoom every week. Poor Waleed, I feel for him. Um, <laughs> I, would, I, I, I hope that it's Steve Price over Zoom. Like that would be great. That's funny. Like him just like interjecting over Zoom and just just say something fucked. <laughs> well, I actually think that that women shouldn't be spoke spoken shouldn't speak unless spoken to, mm. and he says that like forty seconds after, <laughs> like Lisa Wilkinson goes, "All right, now it's time for some ads." <laughs> he doesn't even realize that they've gone to an ad break and they're just like sitting reading their notes, ignoring each other because. <laughs> They're not friends, and then, and then out of nowhere, Steve goes, I actually think women are whores. And like, all right, Steve, first, way too late. <laughs> Second, super inappropriate. Very sexist. Come on, dude. You can't do that shit. And then, and then the break would come. Then they come back from break, and they go, all right, in today's top story, and Steve would go, what? What's wrong with calling women whores? <laughs> Out of context, that's how they would start the break, and then and then he and then he go, oh, hang on, I've got a face filter on, and he's he looks like a frog. <laughs> no one's noticed because that's what he looks like in real life. And 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 that's what you get for being on the project is just paid out by me, you know. It is pretty crazy that this show is like not that much smaller than the project. Why, why did I get a million dollars to do this show? Mm. You know, I've done 252 episodes. Sometimes I remember how many I've done. You know, I don't like the person I do the show with either. Where's my million? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, man. No, all good. All good. No worries. Um, <laughs> big Brother, right? So TV's oh. fucked. It's in the toilet. The... the um, they don't make anything anymore other than reality TV because it's cheap. And they make they make reality TV the same way that I like made cooking without instructions. I like got in a I I went to How To Basics House for 10 days. We shot 12 episodes and we're like we're just going to release this over the year, right? They do that rea with reality TV. They just put cunts in a room for 40 days and they're like this is going to be 5 days a week. Cuz most of their reality shows like I didn't realize that like Love Island and shit, mm. it's no longer once a week. Like reality shows used to be once a week. Nah. No? Uh, nah, Big Brother, Biggest Loser, that stuff was every night of the week. Really? Saturdays. Oh, okay. I remember watching, because like Big Brother would have eviction nights, nomination nights and Friday night games. 
and oh, then they'd yeah. also have their daily show in between that. And then Biggest Loser had the same shit. They That's had right. Monday to Friday and then Sunday Night Eviction. Well, I take I take back my biggest criticism then. Yeah. No, but that but the thing is that's the only thing they make now. They only make reality TV and news because yeah. the, those are the two cheapest things to make. And then they're like, oh, why isn't anybody watching? And they have the quotas to feel like seventy percent Australian made. Yeah, they have to make seventy percent of the content they make has to be Australian. So they go, all right, what's the cheapest shit that we can make that is also will take up the most amount of time, and that is five day a week terrible reality tv shows instead of you know making some comedy making a drama funding the arts they're like fuck that let's fund dickheads uh getting filmed saying stupid shit which you know is basically this show Mm. so where's my million i go back to that channel 10 um anyway no it's on channel 7 now Channel 7. Channel 10 just, was just gave up. One thing they really fucked... So this is the second season they've done of Big Brother this year, but it's VIP, so there's celebrities on it. Keelan's a Big Brother expert. Uh, the Every year, my favourite time of the year is watching you get excited for Big Brother and then after episode one, just being really let down. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I don't think it's Big Brother being bad. I think it's just you playing it up so much in your head which I watch you do just about every week <laughs> about like, man this I thing do. this event this show this product is going to be the best shit ever as soon as I get it and then as soon as you get it you're like ah, boring yeah what's the where's the next thing um so last season they did the 2021 season every single week they changed the time and the day of when the episodes were airing I had no idea whenever it was on I was, why would they do that? Because it was rating so poorly that they were putting oh, they kept, other product and other kept shows in pushing front. it around. Oh, so, like on a man. Sunday it would be seven o'clock. The next Sunday it would be eight o'clock, and then the next Sunday it wouldn't even be on. Right. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, I feel like, but this season they put after they learn. All right. Well, normal people, Big Brother doesn't work. Let's fucking put everything into this. Mm. They've got fucking Caitlyn Jenner. I don't know how much they would have paid for her. Mm. Imagine, like, how much money do you have to pay Caitlyn Jenner, who's part of the Kardashian family, to leave the country, drop everything that she's doing, all of her endorsements, all of her business, all of her running for government bullshit, to sit inside a house in Australia in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah. That's got to be a few million. I wouldn't leave my house for less than 100000 if I were her, you know? Like, think about... The amount of makeup she has to apply just to look presentable. <laughs> like, that's got to be at least $10,000 worth of makeup every time she leaves the bedroom, yeah. right? So, if you want to go there, that's a few million. Mm. And In, to quarantine. For and to weeks. quarantine, yeah, right? Because this was filmed mid-Sydney lockdown. Yes, yeah. So, and then they also got Oma Rosa. I don't know who this bitch is. Who is that? For, She's Donald... She worked for Donald Trump. Yeah, highest... Black woman in White House in the White House when they let her smoke weed in there. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Really, she was like the highest. She was some sort of. You didn't like that one. Political high political <laughs> a high ranking uh, political advisor. Right. So she so she was like, hey Donald, I reckon you should do this, and yeah. then and then I love him with advisors. He he like likes them for two for two days. Yeah. And he's like, you're a smart person, and she's like, oh thank you. And then and then she'll go, hey Donald, I don't think you should eat glue. And he's like, get the fuck out, bitch. Every time, like you say the wrong thing, and she's like, and he'll go on TV and go, she's the dumbest person I've ever met. It's very <laughs> stupid, small brain. Tried to hit on me. I wasn't interested. That's why she hates me, right? Uh, so she's gone into Big Brother, and and the dude. So they've got they've got Omarosa, a girl who a woman who worked for Trump. They've got Caitlyn Jenner, and then who else do they have? Thomas Markle, and Thomas Markle, who's Meghan Markle's half brother. They haven't spoken in 11 years. Who doesn't like her. So they've got the person who doesn't like Meghan Markle. They've got someone who worked with Donald Trump and they have Caitlyn Jenner. Kyle Sanderland's previous girlfriend. And one of Kyle Sanderland's old girlfriends. So those those are like the four pillars of like, of, of like racist Australians. Like, man, the chick who used to fuck Kyle Sanderland's and then Caitlyn Jenner, someone who worked for Donald Trump. Uh, and who... I'm forgetting someone. Meghan and Meghan Markle's half-brother. That haven't spoken in 11 years. They haven't spoken in 11 years. It, that's, like, that's like the... If, you, if there's any way to summon like a sunburned racist guy from Brisbane mm. to sit in front of his television, it's that. 
It's like, I want to hear about Trump and how much of a bitch Meghan Markle is and how big is Kyle Sanderland's dick. Mm. Let's crack open a fucking beer and go. 4X gold, let's do this shit. So I'm thinking, dude, they've put so much money into this. They have all these other celebrities as well. And then we watched it. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It was a little bit interesting watching everybody come in and interact. Like, uh, I feel like they really did Caitlyn Jenner dirty, you know? Like, I feel like they really disrespected her. She came in and they put her into a, into a room, like a tiny room, as in like all of the furniture was tiny, the roof was low. Like, look, you, do, you don't need to make Caitlyn Jenner look any bigger. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's really disrespectful to her. She already looks like a giant on a normal couch. Don't put her in a child-sized chair. That, I feel, that's transphobic, I think. That's making her look bad. I reckon that's a hate crime, putting Caitlyn Jenner in a tiny little room, making her sit at a little tiny baby table. That's not good. It looked like a fucking shot in Tall Girl. Wasn't good, right? Uh, so they do that. That was kind of interesting. Omarosa's is on all, of the, on all of the previews going, oh, I reckon Donald Trump's going to watch this. No, he's not. There's no fucking way that Donald Trump is sitting in America down trying to work out the 7 Plus app. <laughs> it's like, well, why doesn't this shit work? There's no way he's sitting there going, I wonder what Omarosa said about me on Big Brother Australia while she was bitching about me with Caitlyn Jenner. Mm. Is Caitlyn Jenner running for the Republican Party? Or the yeah, yeah, Republican. Republican. That's Governor of uh, California. I fucking hope she wins. I really do. If she wins, it's over. It's all over there. That's the end because the next step she'll go for Prez. They had uh, they promoed for months this clip of Caitlyn Jenner talking about OJ Simpson. Oh, because, I remember this. They were friends with Nicole and OJ. Yeah. And, and that's the woman he killed, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Ron Goldman, yeah. Ron Goldman was a friend of Nicole's. Yeah. And can I say he killed him? Cuz he's oh, innocent. He's innocent. Well, he was convicted. He got out of prison. No, no. So he was found not guilty. Right. Or something. He got off anyway. And then he went to prison because he um, robbed he robbed some store or something. <laughs> Armed robbery. Come on, dude. Stealing his own trophies is why he got put uh, in prison. Oh, okay. Because after right. his trial, he had no money, so he had to sell everything. Oh, uh, okay. Dude, and he was just... And, and I guess... I, you know what? I guess he left court going... I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, so like, he robbed this place with a gun and then was sent to prison for that. Anyway, so they Oh, and that was that big car chase. No, no. This No, so the big car chase was part of the O.J. Simpson trial, like the original murder trial. Oh. And then like 15 years later. And he was later, like, guys, I was running away from the police because I didn't do it. Yeah. And then 15, <laughs> 15 years later yeah. in Las Vegas, I think he arm robbed a store. Okay. And that's what got him. Gr- right. Okay, cool. Yes. But anyway, so Caitlyn Jenner's the promo win the fuck out of this clip of her talking about OJ Simpson. Yeah. And then the actual clip isn't any different to the promo clip. It's right. pretty much exactly the same clip. And that was what they promo. That was the entire advertising. So you campaign. already know that that is the best thing that will happen in the entire season. Yeah. The two- is that clip that you saw in the ads for three months before the show. Yeah. And they put it in episode one. And they're like, that's it. And they, after doing all of that, they got Caitlyn Jenner, Omarosa, fucking Kyle Sanderland's ex, uh, and then and then like some TikTok influencer whose whose talent is literally like flexing his biceps, like that's that's they go oh man he's a massive TikTok influencer, looked him up seven thousand views good on him he's having a crack right, but all he does is just flex he's like I'm a fucking I'm an influencer. I mean, it, it's like, all right, cool. He's like one of those people. He's like the, the, the people that don't realize that they're a caricature of themselves. Mm. It's like, oh, you don't realize that people are laughing at you because you're conceited. Like, I really got the vibe that they didn't have to edit him poorly at all. He just like operated like that. Yeah. And the producers were like, all right, sweet. This is going to be really easy. We don't have to cut this guy to shit. He's just a wank. Mm. I love that. Um, and after all of that, they get all these massive people fly them across the world they get like 370,000 views on episode one so you know that shit's gonna end up with like 150 man what the fuck would you do if you're a television executive just ride it out till you retire I think 
just every now and then give Dave Hughes the call up. All right, that's my job done for the day. See you later. Good on him. Anyway, what else do we have here? I went to an Oz rap show. Oh, dude, Manscaped. Man, Manscaped is the best shit ever. Do you know how powerful their motors are? They're so powerful that if you're in an Uber after a flight and it accidentally goes off in your bag and you, you're driving in silence 30 minutes from the airport to your Airbnb with uh, your female employee, the Uber driver will 100% think that she's packed a vibrator. <laughs> that was an awkward trip. I couldn't work out what it was. I thought it was my sleep apnea like uh, vibrator thing. I've got this thing, right? If I sleep on my back, if it detects that I'm on my back, it will start to vibrate like that. So I'm like, oh, this must be going off in my bag. That's what it is. Um, that's actually a, a prostate massager. Um, I thought it's going off in my bag. So I check my bag and I find it. I'm like, oh, well, that's not it. And then, and then I'm looking around and the, the Uber driver's like, super sus he's like what like i thought he thought it was his car and then he has one of these engines that turn off at the red light and then it's still buzzing I'm like all right well it's definitely not the car and then keelan's not really doing anything he's kind of talking i'm like well it's not keelan and rosie's just like dead silent i'm like oh poor girl how embarrassing in front of the boss right <laughs> the whole trip i'm thinking poor rosie the guys the uber driver's like man how embarrassing that's funny we get out of the car and then uh, the Uber driver makes some sly comment going, oh, I thought my engine was uh, having trouble. And then uh, I just copped it. I was like, oh, yeah, that must be my vibrator to save Rosie the embarrassment. Uh, and then it turns out that it was actually Keelan's lawnmower 4.0 going off in his bag. And that's how powerful it is. But the Uber driver never got that explanation. <laughs> so he would have... He's probably telling everyone that story. Dude, you'll never guess what happened when I drove, like, these three people home. This poor girl's vibrator went off in her bag. <laughs> so that's great. And, dude, you can get 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game, by using code SPEARS at manscaped.com. Really good stuff. It's a great razor. I use it. Keelan packs it. He takes it everywhere with him. He doesn't take the batteries out. There are no batteries, actually. You charge it. How do you stop it going off in your bag? Well, it should, it should have been in like a toiletry bag. Oh, okay. But I just chucked it in my bag. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Classic Keelan vibes. So, guys, <laughs> it actually comes in a toiletry bag too. A really nice oh, one. it does too, Yeah, the yeah. tool shed they call it. Yeah. Right? So, je definitely get yourself a ball bag trimmer. It will. The battery is so good that it will last 30 minutes in your bag and, and oh, still works. And then works. I shave the next day. And it still worked? Yeah. Great. So, there you go. Durable, resilient. Battery life is up there, as powerful as your average vibrator. <laughs> Get yourself a Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. I use it. We all use it. It's good stuff. Do you think it could be good for a girl like buying it for your girlfriend so she can shave her pussy and get off? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't think so. I it think vibrates, one... It vibrates quite hard. I, I would really, really recommend it against that. <laughs> I would... Abs I would... Yeah, you don't think so, Rosie? No, I don't. I think that would be shockingly dangerous. <laughs> I think that... I mean, if, if, you're, if, you, if you like taking risks, maybe, if you're a particularly risky girl, no, absolutely not. I think that, I'm, that, that Manscaped would be horrified at the suggestion, <laughs> actually. I think that would be very, very... We might get a stern email <laughs> for even at the bringing up the idea of doing that. Okay. Shave your pussy, yes. But that's all I would do <laughs> to your pussy with the Manscaped thing. You know, there's there's a reason why the, there's different companies for different things. Mm, okay. You know, hit up Hitachi. Manscaped don't really do that. I've, I've got time for one more story. So we are in Tassie. I'm really excited about that. I don't know when this video is going to come out because it's going to be a big edit for us. But um, we're doing a video on the man who headbutt Tony Abbott. I don't know if you guys remember that. If you're an international viewer, uh, Tony Abbott is an ex-prime minister, a uh, leader of the country. And one time he came down to Tasmania and uh, a guy just headbutt him. 
in the street because he felt like it. It wasn't like political violence. It wasn't activism. He wasn't trying to make a point. He just didn't like Tony Abbott. So when he saw the opportunity to headbutt him, he took it. Uh, and we we're doing a video on this and we actually managed to track the guy down and we've done an interview with him for the video. So I think it's going to be quite a good vid. Rosie's currently editing it. It's a, it's a big video, but I think it's going to be very, very interesting and funny. Um, and we're going to have to put a giant disclaimer at the front of it. We do not condone any of the actions talked about in this video. Because, dude, last thing I need is a knock on the door from the AFP going, hey, man, that video you made, uh, was that incitement? Absolutely not. I don't condone it. I think he's a terrible person. And I think he should have gotten life. Um, that being said, very funny video coming up soon that I'm really excited about. It's something that I've been wanting to do actually for years because I think it's fascinating that he kind of got away with it. Like like in, in Australia, Australia is the only country where you could assault a leader of the country and only do a couple of months in prison. That's effectively getting away with it. If you were in America, you would be dead. If you, you can't even insult the, the, world, the leader of your country in North Korea or even think about insulting the guy without getting executed. In Australia, you can headbutt the prime minister and, get, and do two months if we all agree that it was kind of funny. <laughs> so that's that's coming up that's something to look forward to and let's uh get into miscellaneous bit at the end guys the worst part of the podcast where i answer your emails um guys if you want to if you have a question if you have need some life advice if you have a story to tell me send an email through to podcast at loosebeers.com um we have uh, this one, how to get back at my cunt of a boss. Hey, Lewis, my name is Sam. I love your stuff enough that I joined your Patreon. Thank you very much. I got into your comedy from a friend who told me about you, and now I'm trying to get more people into your stand-up. Thank you very much. Um, I've been working at a recycling depot counting cans and bottles for around seven years. It's been my one and only job. For the majority of the time, it's been fine. However, my boss has always been a piece of work. Treats people differently, especially his son, who he treats like the second coming of Jesus. I hate that stuff. I know it's his son, but I think if you're the boss, you have to at least try to be fair to everyone at the work site. True. Now, recently, I've started making content online. I've been having so much fun and I'm starting to make a bit of money. That's awesome. Only fans? Um, I've also had some family dramas and I've asked the 2IC. What's a 2IC? second in command for an extra day off a week to sort that stuff out from six days down to five days which was given the all clear oh you're working six days dude hustler but now not only is my cunt of a boss treating me like shit but my workmates have been telling me that he's been saying talking a lot of shit about my family issues and my online content behind my back while i'm not around i don't know what to do that sucks I have, I guess I have two questions. One, is there anything that I can do that will fuck with him? I've started ignoring him when he whistles and yells at me at work, but I'm not too cultured in the field of fucking with people like you are. Also, I don't earn enough online to just simply quit, but it's the only thing I'm passionate about. I guess I could look for another job, but I've been at the place for so long and I've made a lot of great friends there. Any help on this issue would be great. Thanks, Lewis. Have a shit one. Dude, you've come to the right place. I've quit so many jobs. Uh, I've quit several jobs before I had, before I was making any money online. I, I'm I'm a big, I'm a big uh, advocate for fuck it. I'm leaving and not telling the boss. Of course, I would never encourage that um, behavior in the people who work for me because that would be bad because that would affect me. But when it comes to other people, go for it. Um, no, I think look. I think that if you have a if you have like a job that you're passionate about, I would never do that. But like, I mean, you're working at a recycling plant, plant, dude. You could find another job that's similar to that, like a physical type of thing. If your boss is a cunt, you don't owe him anything. You know, like you don't owe if you don't have an exciting, cool job in a field that you're passionate about. If you're only there for money, you don't owe the guy anything beyond your time. So I would say that if you I would say, look, maybe start looking for a new job. Maybe don't quit unless you have a lead. But, you know, maybe if you're making a little bit of money online, if can you afford to go part-time at a different place or at your work and then you can supplement the income with the online thing? That's kind of what it was for me. All of the big leaps that I've taken from quitting my job to hiring a space to hiring employees, I haven't been exactly able to afford it uh, un 
but until I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Like when I'm when I properly moved into the warehouse, it was a lot of money for rent and I couldn't really afford it when I rented it out, but renting it out enabled me to make more content which made more money which then I could afford it. So really I had like I had like enough money to pay for it without making any money for like two months. And I was like, all right, if I can't make this work in two months, I'm going to have to move out. Let's roll the dice. And then immediately I started making more money. And the same thing was true when I hired Keelan. I'm like, all right, I can pay this guy (laughs) for two months, but if if this doesn't work, he's going back to Red Rooster. Um, And unfortunately, I started making more money, so I started working with him more. Uh, and, and the same thing is true as when I moved out of the warehouse and moved into an actual space, it was like much more money. I couldn't, I could barely afford it, but then doing it enabled me to make more money. So that's kind of how I've always moved is like, uh, it's only really now that I've started making enough money where I'm like, okay, cool. So I can do things and not worry about them imploding if I like break my leg, you know? So I, I would just, I would just say like, if you're making a little bit of money online and you reckon that you could make more, go part time and see if you can do it. If you can't, you can always go back up to full time. I'm sure maybe, maybe if your job is so flexible that you can drop days and then pick up days again, maybe don't quit. Just fucking deal with the guy. Don't talk to him. Um, uh, yeah, I would just say if you have a flexible job, move down part time. If it's not that flexible, maybe leave and see what you can make of it you know, online because you'll regret not doing it if you just stay there forever. You've been there for seven years. It doesn't sound like you're moving up anytime soon. So what do you owe this person? Like you can still be friends with the people that you work with outside of work. That's I think that's a, a thing that a lot of people who, who are in like jobs that aren't fulfilling get stuck. They get stuck there because they're like, oh, I have a lot of work friends. Um, and it's like those people don't, own the business so like you leaving doesn't hurt them you can still be friends with them outside of it and you can maybe find something better for yourself that's what i think anyway that's my that's my opinion as someone who has quit and bounced around lots and lots of different jobs until i've made the thing that i really wanted to do work um We have to wrap up? Okay. All right. That's the end of the episode, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, There'll be a Patreon episode up uh, as well soon. And uh, hopefully, anyway, I'll uh, I'll see you guys uh, next Sunday. I'll be back in Tassie. And I hope you have a shit one. Bye.